is Netanyahu purposely sabotaging hostage negotiations to prolong the war in Gaza? He's repeatedly leaked information to the press and members of his negotiating team have said that since December, definitely since January, it's clear to everyone that we're not conducting negotiations. Polls show historically low levels of confidence in Netanyahu as Prime Minister, with support for his Likud party dwindling. Internal coalition tensions over issues like military service exemptions for ultra-Orthodox Jews and criticism over the handling of security warnings prior to the October 7 attack also make it unlikely that he would be re-elected. So is Netanyahu prolonging the war in order to save his political career? Here's a timeline of hostage negotiations and how they've been skittled by Netanyahu. In November 2023, Hamas and Israel agreed to a temporary ceasefire and hostage exchange deal. The agreement led to a swap where 80 Israeli hostages were released and 117 Palestinians who had been held in Israeli prisons were released. Fast forward to January, Israel began preparing for new negotiations. The negotiating team, with the backing of the now disbanded war cabinet, chose not to talk about any further exchanges publicly as they thought this sensitive issue could derail the talks. But Netanyahu went against this and leaked details about this to the press. Some members of the negotiating team accused him of encouraging public opposition to the deal. On January 17, the war cabinet met to discuss the hostage deal and outline what Mossad chief David Barnier was allowed to discuss at the upcoming Paris summit and what he could agree to. But after the meeting, Netanyahu decided to take a tougher stance for Israel without alerting the cabinet members. Netanyahu's stalling negotiations meant the Paris summit was delayed. Qatar's foreign ministry accused him of obstructing and undermining the mediation process for reasons that appear to serve his political career instead of prioritising saving innocent lives. On January 28, the head of Israel's Mossad met with mediators in Paris for the first time and they reported significant progress. But when he returned to Israel, Netanyahu issued five press releases confirming otherwise. At the B'nai David preparatory programme in the West Bank settlement of Eli, he says, I hear talks about all kinds of deals, so I want to clarify. We won't withdraw the Israeli Defence Forces from the Gaza Strip and won't release thousands of terrorists. At this point, it's worth noting that Netanyahu is referring to Palestinians being held by Israel as terrorists in a blanket statement. Even though many of these captives are children, the focus then shifted to agreeing on terms before the holy month of Ramadan. But Netanyahu reduced the negotiating team's power. He said they can listen to and engage with mediators, but can't agree to or suggest terms. Hamas released a statement on February 6th to announce they treated the new framework positively. But almost immediately, Israel announces they have no intention of stopping the war. Netanyahu's personal advisor, Ophir Falk, who isn't part of the negotiating team, attended the Cairo summit and stops any more delegates attending talks. This is completely different to what the Shin Bet chief's plan was. Netanyahu once again limits the parameters of negotiation and no deal is made. It's now been five months since the Israeli hostages were taken. Qatar is still encouraging negotiations and the members of the war cabinet and high-ranking defence officials are urging Netanyahu to call a cabinet meeting to restart negotiations. But Netanyahu doesn't listen. Nitzan Alon is frustrated by Netanyahu's actions and worries that an opportunity for a new deal could be missed. In April, Hamas and Israel are once again close to agreeing to a deal. Amid negotiations, the Israeli army announces it has completed its operations in Khan Yunus and has fully withdrawn its forces from the area. But later that day, Netanyahu released the statement. TV program Yuvda released an interview with two senior members of the Israeli negotiating team who remain anonymous. I can't say that without Netanyahu there would be a deal. I can say that the probability of a deal would be higher. Since December, definitely since January, it's clear to everyone that we're not conducting negotiations. It happens again and again. You get a mandate during the day, then the Prime Minister makes phone calls at night, instructs don't say that and I'm not approving this. In a war cabinet meeting, members decide what the lowest number of hostages exchanged would be acceptable. They agree to keep this top secret so that Hamas can't leverage this information. But on the same day, Netanyahu tells Minister Bezalel Smotrich, who isn't in the war cabinet, the secret information. Smotrich alerts the media and publicly pressures Netanyahu saying, agreeing to a deal is a humiliating surrender. If you decide to raise a white flag, the government new head will have no right to exist. Netanyahu tells the media that he won't stop the war without achieving his goals. 
A deal is proposed to Hamas and Israeli intelligence predicts that Hamas will agree. But during a war cabinet meeting on May the 2nd, Netanyahu suggested ordering the IDF to immediately enter Rafah. All other meeting participants opposed this idea arguing it would instantly ruin the deal. Netanyahu makes an announcement on behalf of a senior diplomatic official, Israel will under no circumstances agree to the end of the war as part of a deal involving the release of hostages. The statement added, the IDF will enter Rafah and destroy the Hamas battalions remaining there, whether there is a temporary truce for releasing the hostages or not. He also prohibits the Israeli delegation from attending another round of talks in Cairo without alerting the war cabinet. The day after, Netanyahu called for a vote on a law to shut down Qatari-funded television network Al Jazeera's operation in Israel, despite the Qatari-led negotiations. Israel submits a hostage release framework to mediators, but the public are not given information. President Biden then reveals information about that framework. After his speech, Netanyahu says, Israel's conditions for ending the war have not changed, and they include destroying the military and governing capabilities of Hamas. There will be no ceasefire if these conditions are not met. Prime Minister Netanyahu who attends a confidential session of the Knesset's Foreign Affairs and Defence Committee. Following the meeting, he once again angers members of the War Cabinet, stating to the public that his position in the confidential session was that he opposes ending the conflict under the framework proposed by President Biden. And on June 17, he dissolved the Israeli War Cabinet. Netanyahu then gives an interview to the Patriots on Channel 14. He says Israel is ready for a deal that would return some hostages, but is committed to continuing the war. Once again, he potentially jeopardizes a deal that hinges on the mediator's promise that Netanyahu takes into consideration all stages of the proposed deal. The Prime Minister then meets with family members of Israeli hostages in Washington. He shares that the conditions for their return are ripening. According to Haaretz, the family said they cannot wait any longer and that he must close the deal now. Daniel Neutra, whose brother is in Hamas captivity, says that he met with Netanyahu and that the urgency of the matter did not seem to resonate with him. Jonathan Dekel Chen, whose son Saji is a hostage, said that any true friend of Israel must pressure our Prime Minister to secure a hostage release deal. But given Netanyahu's statements and spontaneous decisions, it's likely the families of the hostages will continue to anxiously wait.